Today, let's talk about the history of systems of measurement. So, these are the primitive ways of measurement. Man turned first to parts of his body and his natural surroundings in his quest for measuring instruments. The length of a foot, the width of a finger, and the distance of a step were all accepted measurements. So, we have here the inch, hand, span, foot, yard, cubit, leg, and pace. So, first, let's talk about the inch. So, at first, an inch was the width of a man's thumb. In the 14th century, King Edward II of England ruled that one inch equal three grains of barley placed end to end lengthwise. After the inch, let's have the hand. A hand was approximately five inches or five digits fingers across. Today, a hand is four inches and is used to measure horses from the ground to the horse's shoulder. Next, let's have the span. The span was the length of the hand stretched out about 9 inches. Next is the foot. In ancient times, the foot was 11 and 1 over 42 inches. Today, it is 12 inches the length of the average man's foot. Now, let's have the yard. A yard was originally the length of a man's belt or girdle as it was called. In the 12th century, King Henry I of England fixed the yard as the distance from his nose to the thumb of his outstretched arm. Today, it is 36 inches. Now, let's have the cubit. In ancient Egypt, a cubit was the distance from the elbow to the fingertips. Today, a cubit is about 18 inches. Then, now let's have a lick. A lick was used by the Greeks to measure the distance from the tip of the thumb to the tip of the index finger. And now, let's have the last one, which is the pace. The ancient Roman soldiers marched in paces which were the length of a double step, about 5 feet, 1,000 paces was a mile. Today, a pace is the length of one step, 2 and one half to 3 feet. The stature of the human body, according to the Talmudist, contains about 3 cubits from the feet to the head. Now, the ordinary stature of men, when they are barefoot, is greater than 5 Roman feet and less than 6 Roman feet. Take a third part of this and the vulgar cubit will be more than 20 unique and less than 24 unique of the Roman foot. And consequently, the sacred cubit will be more than 24 unique and less than 28 plus 4 fifth. Unique of the same foot. This is according to Sir Isaac Newton. Now let's proceed to the English and metric systems of measurements, which is the um, English system and the metric system. First, let's have the English system. England, by the 18th century, had achieved a greater degree of standardization than the continental countries. The English units were well suited to commerce and trade because they had been developed and refined to meet commercial needs. Although the English system of measurement was spread to many parts of the world, including American colonies, standards still differed to an extent undesirable for commerce among the 13 colonies. The need for greater uniformity then led to the inclusion of clauses in the Articles of Confederation ratified by the original 13 colonies in 1781 and the Constitution of the United States ratified in 1790. 
giving the Congress the power to fix uniform standards for weight and measures. Now, let's proceed to the metric system. So, the metric system was developed as a complete integrated system. A meter is defined as one ten millionth of the distance from the equator to the North Pole. A centimeter is one hundredth of a meter and a kilometer is one thousand meters. Metric measurements can be given as decimal numbers because of the base 10 system. Units of capacity are based on the liter. 1 milliliter equals 1 cubic centimeter. The gram is the basic units of mass. And it is equal to the mass of 1 cubic milliliter of water. Temperature can be measured on a metric scale. The centigrade or Celsius scale. The temperature ranges from a freezing point of uh, 0 degrees Celsius to a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius for water. Unlike the customary system, only a single unit is used in giving measurements. The general conference adopted an extensive revision and simplification of the system in 1960. The name Le System International de Units or the International System of Units with the International Abbreviation SI was adapted for this modernized metric system. After the history of systems of measurements, let's proceed to the measure and measuring devices. So when we say measurement, it is the process or the result of determining the ratio of a physical quantity such as a length, time, temperature, and others to a unit of measurement such as the meter, second, or degree Celsius. The science of measurement is called metrology. So here's our the measuring devices. So first, let's have the instruments used to determine linear measures. So first, we have here the ruler. Next, we have the meter stick and the tape measure. Now, let's have the instrument used to determine weight. So we have here the platform balance. Now, let's have the instrument used to determine time. So we have here the clock and our glass. The next, we have here the instrument used to measure temperature, which is the thermometer. Then, we have here the instrument used to measure angles, which is the protractor. Then, the instrument used to measure liquid or powder is the measuring cups. Next meeting, we will discuss about measuring length. Then, we will identify the basic unit of length, convert larger unit of length to a smaller unit, and convert a smaller unit of length to larger unit.